Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and this is Microsoft's latest Surface, the Surface Pro X. And this is the future of what Surface is supposed to be and this only comes in one color currently. So this comes in black and then starts at $999 and goes to $1,799. That does not include the keyboard and the pen, which we'll talk about in a moment. Now the configurations start with eight gigabytes of Ram and then 128 gigabytes of storage. You also have eight gigabytes and 256 gigabytes of storage. And then you have 16 gigabytes of Ram and then 512 gigabytes of storage. There is no expandable storage on this surface though. Now this is the middle model. You can see here 256, eight gigabytes of Ram, and let's go ahead and open this up. I think I've started a corner here. There we go. Let's see if we can pull this back. And let's take a look at this because this, I saw a little demo unit in the store and this is a really nice surface minus that expandable storage, but you can service the storage and change it out. So let's go ahead and open this up. We'll take a look at the surface pro X. We'll set it up and take a look at the interface as well. So there's the box itself. You've got the surface here. It's really solid too. Let me set it aside just for a moment and let's see what comes in the box. So you've got your typical Microsoft Surface Pro X guide. So you've got a little guide here that explains everything. And then we've got a SIM card removal tool. And that's because this has Microsoft's latest processor in it. The new Microsoft SQ one chip or Microsoft surface Qualcomm one it's partnered with Qualcomm and allows you to have LTE. So you can put in a SIM card and then connect to whatever your carrier is. So let's go ahead and set this aside and take a look at the power supply. Now the plug is basically the same that you get with the surface pro seven with the connector, the surface connector, which is magnetic that I always really liked. And then you've also got the wall AC adapter, and then you've got an extra USB a port here so you can charge devices off of it. Let me set all of this aside and we'll take a look at the surface itself. Now let's unwrap this. Now this feels really solid, but unlike the surface pro seven, this is made of aluminum instead of magnesium. So let's go ahead and open it up here. Take a look at the kickstand. So it's very, very thin on the bottom and it does not accept the current surface keyboard. So you'll have to purchase a new one. The connector's a little bit different. And then in the back here, this is what's interesting. We'll talk about the other specs in a moment, but right here we can pop this off and we'll use the SIM ejector tool from Microsoft there. We just pop it into this little hole there, just like you would eject a SIM card. And this, this is an aluminum piece. And then you've got your storage here. Now Microsoft can change this out, or if you can find some of this, you could upgrade this, upgrade this yourself. It's just a single Torx bolt here or Torx nut. It looks like, and then you've got your nano SIM slot here. So if you have a SIM card, you can pop it in there. Let's go ahead and put the little plate back on just clicks down like that. And this kickstand is always very durable. In fact, they're very interested in making their products last a long time, which I appreciate. So that looks like it's going to break, but it's not. And it, it's very durable that way. So we'll close it here and take a look around the outside. Now this is a new display that's 13 inches instead of the smaller display. They've shrunk the bezels on the side. And so this is 2880 by 1920 with 267 pixels per inch. It goes up to 450 nits. So it should be pretty nice touch display, of course, with pen input and things. And then also around the front here, we have a five megapixel windows. Hello camera that you can see here on this side, we've got our surface connector and our power button and nothing else on the bottom. Again, our connector for the keyboard. Now on this side, we have two USB C ports. They are not Thunderbolt, but they do allow you to charge the device with USB C. It won't be as fast as using the surface connector, but you have that option. And then you have the volume button here as well. So I like the placement of those. Now, before we boot this up, let's open this in the surface keyboard or the signature keyboard with slim pen. And if you buy this as a combination, it's still pretty expensive. It comes in around $250 or so, or two sixty nine ninety nine without any discount. So pretty expensive. If you don't buy it bundled, it's even more, it's about $15 more. So it is made out of Alcantara or Alcantara, depending on how you want to pronounce that. And that's what they use in a lot of cars. 
I actually like it. They use it on a lot of headliners and high-end cars or Tesla, for example, in the door panels and things like that. So let's go ahead and open this up. There we go. And this should be an all glass trackpad. So it's very similar to the surface keyboards we had before. Looks like there's nothing else in here, but we have the surface pen and something that one of the Microsoft store reps showed me is if you put this in the wrong way, for example, put it in like this, it will actually try and flip itself over. So it's kind of interesting, put it in like this and it will charge itself too off of this. So you'll see it just flipped the other way. It's kind of fun to play around with. And then this should be a backlit keyboard as well. So it's a glass trackpad, back kit, backlit keyboard, just like we had before and Alcantara back. So let me move all of this aside and then we'll boot the surface pro up. Let's go ahead and click this into place. And just for a quick size comparison, let me bring over the surface pro seven. Now without the keyboard covers, they're the same weight, 1.7 pounds. So this gives you an idea of thickness. It's not terribly different. Let me move the pen here. It's not terribly different, but this is magnesium. The surface pro X is aluminum. Gives you an idea of size here. If I line them up, it's a little bit narrower as far as the width of the surface pro X. And then this way here. So it gives you an idea of how wide everything is. And it is a little bit thinner, not too much, but it is thinner. And supposedly this new SQ one processor is supposed to be as fast as a core I five. That's actually in the surface pro seven. Now let's unfold this here. And it looked like it turned on by itself as soon as I connected the keyboard cover. So you can click this up just like this and hide the pen when you're not using it, which is really nice. It's just a nice way to store here. Now windows 10 X is booted up, but let's take a quick look at the pen and the pen has a little button here. It's got a button at the top that can also be used as an eraser. And then it's just got these little nibs at the top. Now, if I bring in the current surface pro pen, this is for the surface pro seven or before that you get an idea. It's a little bit different. It's definitely thinner than the current one and it's a little bit shorter as well. So that gives you an idea of size, but the nice thing is, is it wirelessly charges here. You never have to replace a battery, but let's go ahead and set windows up. Now you can see the display is fairly reflective, but let's go ahead and set up windows. sign in here, a touch of Wi-Fi there, and we'll have your PC ready for all you plan to do. Use your voice or the keyboard along the way, and if you'd like me to stay quiet, just select the little microphone icon towards the bottom of your screen. If you need an assistive screen reader, press the Windows, Control, and Enter keys at the same time. To now let's go ahead and fold this up. The region is set to the United States. Yes. Your keyboard is set to US. Want to stick with that? Yes. Yes. Do you also type with another keyboard layout? No. No. Now let's get you connected to a network. Now that everything's connected, we should be able to set this up. It does seem like the voice is a little bit slower as far as reading and then pausing in between having to respond. Now let's see what's new from windows. It sort of fades the voice in and out. Next up, the legal stuff. In short, you'll need to select accept to use windows. We'll hit accept or else we won't be able to use windows. So I'll go ahead and log in. Use windows. Hello to unlock your PC quick as a wink with just your face. No wink required. Want to set that up now? Yes. Okay. Hold still for a second. We need to learn to recognize you. And it even recognizes me off to the side of the camera, which is pretty impressive. That right, looks like it's going to work. Then I'll set up a pen. We'll hit yes. Now we can get instant access to Android phones or things like that. I'll do that later. OneDrive for some added peace of mind? Yes. Your PC comes with a free one month trial of Office 365. Should we get it ready for you to use? No. I'll do that later. Hey, look, that's me, Cortana. Can I have permission to use the info I need to do my best work? Yes. Of course, you can decline that or not use it. Settings Microsoft recommends. 
I'll just accept those for now. You can change those later on if you'd like to. Almost done now. We just need to get a few more things polished up for you, and Windows will be all yours. Looking forward to helping out. Now, a couple things I wanted to go over is Microsoft says this is the first Microsoft or Windows computer with an AI engine that will allow for some pretty interesting things. And it also has nine tera ops of operations per second. So nine trillion operations per second for its AI engine and over two tera ops of graphics performance. Now, if that's true, that puts this in line with an Xbox one X. However, this can't play games on that level. So it's I'm not sure what it's being used for. Plus it's so thin. I don't know if you could get that heat out of it. Now, another thing to mention here is you might notice that the screen is flickering. That means it's using PWM or pulse width modulation to modulate the actual brightness of the display. But I've played around with this just for a moment. And if I turn it up here, you'll see that you can't see it anymore. And that means that it's either gone brighter or over a certain brightness, it disappears as far as the PWM. And that's pretty typical, but we're at about 75% brightness and you're not seeing it. When I lower it down to about 50%, you're seeing the screen flicker. So just keep that in mind if you're going to buy one of these and PWM bothers you with screen flicker, that may be a, a factor against this for you. Now on the back of this, we have an all new 10 megapixel camera that can record in 4k. So that's all new with this. And it also has a battery that should last about 13 hours. Early tests. We're not seeing that kind of battery life, but Microsoft just pushed an update for this that should improve that. So I'll have to test it for a little while to know that for sure. Now, if I open this up and we'll take out the pen here, Let's see if it just works. It's working already, which is really nice. We can click the button on the back. Let's see if it gives us an application yet. It did. It opened it. It opened whiteboard. So we'll close that. It's still loading. There we go. We'll get started and it feels very responsive, much like an iPad actually. So it feels more responsive to me than the surface pro seven did. So that's pretty nice. Of course I can just flip this over and use this as an eraser. It's really nice that way. And then the interesting thing is this will run 32 bit applications. It will not run 64 bit applications. So that means we can go into edge and if we want to, we can go get Chrome. So we can get Google Chrome and install that. But if you want to run Photoshop, for example, that's not going to run very well on here in 32 bit mode. So we'll just run this and install Chrome and see how it runs. Now, the other thing is supposedly you can use the USB C ports or the surface dock to connect an external display and it will run two 4k displays supposedly without a problem. So let's go ahead and open Chrome here. We'll see how it runs. It opens normal. Let me try and go to, maybe we'll go to YouTube and see if we can play a 4k video on this. So here's my surface pro seven unboxing. Let me see what options we have. We do have 4k 60, so we can play that, but I will tell you it was a little bit slow to load this. So it is loading. Okay. You'll see it's working well. And in fact, the beginning of this video probably looked like this, but I think you get the idea. We can jump around, take a look at this, this image. And this display looks really, really good. It's viewing angles are pretty good as well. And in general, I think it's a very, very nice display. And of course it's a touch display as well. So Chrome will work and it seems to work as good as say the pixel book go in my experience. Now, a couple other things to mention, this does not have Wi-Fi six. It has 802.11 AC and lower, and also has Bluetooth five. So it's pretty good, but Wi-Fi six is not supported. That's not really too much of an issue, even though the surface pro seven supports it because there's not a whole lot of Wi-Fi six routers out there already. But I think this device overall, as long as the PWM isn't too severe for me, will be a really nice device to use. Now I'll be using the surface pro X over the next week or so. And let me know if there's anything specifically you'd like to see about it. Would you like a full review or maybe a comparison with the surface pro seven? I think both are good devices, but they may serve different purposes. But as far as the keyboard and, and the type covers, they're all backlit and they're very, very similar. You just have this different pen that's in here, but that display with PWM may be something that affects me personally, and I may not be able to use it full time, but touch responsiveness and everything else seems really good on this so far. I'm really excited to try this out and see how it compares to an Intel based machine, since it seems a lot of machines are going arm based. So this new processor may or may not be fast, or it could be incredibly fast. So we'll go to Microsoft here. We'll just search for that and you'll get an idea for web page loading speed. 
it's nice and fast. No issues here. We can zoom and things like that. So I think the experience will be really good, but it may not run everything you want to. So I can't imagine Photoshop, Illustrator, anything that's a serious video editor or anything like that. But let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link this. This is a default Microsoft wallpaper, but I'll link it in the description. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.